Hi, my name is Luis Latino. I have more than 35 years experience in TV production, and this is my demo reel. Check it out. Reno police are also investigating a shooting overnight that left a taxi cab driver dead. Around 10.30 last night, officers responded to the 900 block of Wheeler Avenue in Reno. Yeah, good morning, John. We're just past Vista here on Interstate 80 eastbound, where the backup is already starting because of a two-vehicle crash just up the road here near Mustangs. CHP investigators say the first hit-and-run crash happened just after 8 o'clock Saturday night when a blue Mercedes and a white Nissan sedan were both driving east on Interstate 80 just before San Pablo Dam Road. Witnesses say the blue Mercedes hit the Nissan, causing the Nissan to spin out of control and over the center divider. Southern Marin County firefighters heard how many kids lost their bikes in the devastating wildfires and the wheels started turning. It takes numerous people to get this thing going, as you could see the number of bikes here. They decided to go a different direction and turn their annual holiday bike drive into a fire victim's bike drive, all because Santa Rosa firefighters called and asked them to. They asked me if it's something I was willing to do and continue this process of this bike drive and give it to the victims of Sonoma and Napa County. And I said, absolutely, with no problem. Word went out to the community and businesses, and pretty soon, the firefighters started getting help from citizens in Marin and Sonoma counties. Mill Valley Fire chipped in, donations from Mike's Bikes, Trips for Kids, Ben Franklin Plumbing, and Cali Helmets, just to name a few. 76 people are becoming American citizens today. Some tell us that it's the political unrest of this country that made them want to take this next official step. I'm from France. I'm from Mexico. Afghanistan. The people in this crowd are from 28 different countries, but as of today, they are all American. Well, the times they're changing and they're kind of uncertain, so basically that's why. For some, this day has been a lifetime in the making. I've always been fascinated by the U.S., by its culture, by its people, by its values, by its, its history. So I always wanted to live here. I felt like I was actually born in the wrong country sometimes, you know, I like to say that. For others, like Eda Ula Uchar from Turkey, she hopes it will make traveling internationally less stressful. I was traveling for Turkey six months ago, and this travel ban was so new these days. And when we were coming back here, it was a bit hard for us. It was tough for me and my son. Despite some uncertainty, these new citizens tell me they are filled with an overwhelming sense of hope and optimism and are doing this so they can officially live out their American dream. And a lot of these people whom we spoke to said they cannot wait to vote in the next election. In Alameda, Jackie Ward, KPIX 5. It's the fastest, boldest, and most powerful supercar yet. Lamborghini just took its flagship and amped it up in the Aventador S. Just one of a few ultra unique models on display at the Quail Lodge in Carmel. This is carbon fiber as well. This is carbon fiber, so they complete. The S model is meaner than the original, outfitted with the latest technological improvements, a new four-wheel steering system, 740 horsepower, and it can run up to 217 miles per hour. A customer that would like to show himself is not scared about showing himself, but he's also a guy that is uh, very well informed about technology because this car is full of technology. <laughs> I felt the seat shake. During my test drive on the open road, I could feel why it was named after a Spanish fighting bull. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the Aventador S can go from zero to 60 miles per hour in just three seconds. The car is made to go fast, super fast. So I swapped seats with Lamborghini's professional driver for those high speed turns and. <laughs> the brakes work. <laughs> car gives the driver enough confidence and control so you still feel safe. It was equally terrifying and thrilling for me. The Aventador S isn't shy about its might. It gets 11 miles per hour in the city and 18 on the highway. Starting price tag, $417,000. Right, nice it. job. On the Night Beat, I'm Betty Yu.
It all started around 1 o'clock this afternoon, just south of the city limits of San Leandro. Residents here tell me this gas station has always been a popular meeting spot. A lot of people come here for scratchers, a lot of people come here for coffee. But today, a 32-year-old man and his brother came to the gas station not for a snack, but to sell a cell phone. The sheriff's department says the suspect contacted the victim through the Let Go app, where people can list items for sale, kind of like Craigslist. It appears that this is a transaction that went bad. At some point, uh, it turned into a robbery. The gunman shot and killed the 32-year-old man trying to sell the phone as both men stood in the gas station parking lot. The two suspects quickly drove away. You don't realize this could happen during the day, which it does. When people who live nearby saw the crime scene tape around the gas station, they were worried about the owner of the shop, Al, who is beloved in this community. The owners, they're very well known, good individuals, so that's why everybody knows about this gas station. It's another reason why the victim might have decided to meet at this gas station to sell the phone. Doing it here, would, you know, in a public place at a gas station, for example, would inherently be safe, but in this case, um, we're wondering if that maybe wasn't the case. The Sheriff's Department says this area always sees an increase in the number of robberies during the holiday season, and deputies will be stepping up patrols. Taking somebody's life for a cell phone just does not make sense. In San Leandro, Katie Nielsen, KPIX 5. Federal agents raided a construction business on Dunn Road at 5 in the morning, all part of what sources tell KPIX was a rescue operation to free illegal immigrants from a smuggling and forced labor scheme. Police say at least a dozen people were removed from squalid conditions where there was no running water. They were taken away in these vans to what police called a shelter. Neighbors say they would see the workers coming and going at all hours. It seemed like they were construction wearing orange jackets and all that. It seems like they were from a construction site and they had like black Hondas come in and you were thought, oh, okay, they just got off work. Sources say the workers, all males, were held in two back warehouses which were locked from the outside so they couldn't leave at night. Then in the morning they would be loaded up into that van or that white truck and driven to construction sites where they would work all day for little or no pay. The owner of the construction company, Job Torres Hernandez, ran several businesses, including one called Foam Legends. He was arrested and charged with alien smuggling, transportation, and concealing or harboring aliens. Prosecutors say he smuggled the workers in from Mexico to work exclusively for him and used coercion tactics to keep them on the job, threatening to harm them or their families back home if they ever complained. One neighbor who did not want to go on camera can't believe this was happening across the street. I come working over here every single day and never I see something strange. Sources say the workers will likely get special visas to remain in the U.S. and will probably be called as witnesses against their former boss. In Hayward, Len Ramirez, KPIX 5. KPIX 5's Jackie Ward live in Santa Rosa now where one neighborhood is gone. Jackie. Ann and Liz, this neighborhood is just a cloud of smoke right now. We've been here for just about an hour and my eyes are really burning from all of this devastation here. It's an incredible sight to see. We were on our way from Kaiser to Sutter Health because both of those hospitals had to evacuate their patients. But before we even got to Sutter, we found the remnants of this neighborhood called Coffee Park. It's in the northwest part of Santa Rosa. This was a neighborhood that was lined with beautiful homes. We spoke to one man who said he has many friends who grew up around here and he hung out here a lot when he was little. He described it as the quintessential American neighborhood where you can come to ride bikes and hang out with your friends and family. Today, he is a disbelief of what this place looks like. As far as I know, everybody got out. Uh, my home, my family is safe down in South Santa Rosa. Uh, this is devastating, though. This is it doesn't even look familiar. Uh, used to hang out in this neighborhood a lot when I was younger, and I have an uncle who lives down the road, and it's it's terrible. The gas lines appear to still be on here because we can see some pretty strong flames roaring from pipes. But as you can tell behind me, 
it is just amazing to see that there are fragments of homes left over. What used to be metal racks or washers and dryers, you can kind of make out the typical household appliances and belongings. And for the people who are walking around here, they're checking on their friends and family's homes to see if they're standing. But I have to tell you from where I'm standing, we can't see a single home that survived this fire. We're going to get an update from a Cal Fire uh, public information officer in just a few minutes. He tells me that this is a result of the Tubbs fire. Back to you.